Good afternoon, everyone. So hope you have lunch and not too heavy. Otherwise, we'll be very, very, <laughs> uh, yeah, tired probably. So let me share my screen quickly. So without uh, waiting. So yep, we can see the screen. Yeah, yeah. you can do the presentation mode. Cool. So, so I make, I make sure, sure that, that I share, share the audio, audio as well. As well. Okay. Yeah, there's some echo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. I need, I need to, to disable, disable that. that. So, so sorry, okay. okay. Uh, if there's, there's echo, echo no, no good. So I need, so I need to disable, disable this. this. That's, That's wrong. wrong. Okay, better, right? Yes, it's okay, all good, good. now. Yeah. Okay, uh, yes. So I'll be talking. Okay. <laughs> Just give me a second. Just swap the. Yeah. I'll be talking essential concept in data science. So this is uh, the master class. Actually, hopefully, you actually uh, are interested in learning uh, about data science and artificial intelligence. So, very quick. So, before we start, I would like uh, to do some mentee. So, I Hope that actually you can join us with the mentee and as well as Kahoot. So, but uh, yeah, so this is the uh, if you can. So, I will switch my uh, screen to mentee. And I have two questions uh, Why did you attend the talk? And are you going to pursue a degree? So, let me uh, start the screen. Share. I accidentally probably, I, uh, let me see, oh, it's still here with me. So uh, let me do one more time. Yeah, I saw it already. Yeah, cool. Okay. Because this is the one. Okay, yeah. So if you see here, so I'm, I have two questions. The first question that I'm asking is why do you attend the talk? So this is actually, please go to menti.com. So the, the code that you need to use uh, when uh, asked actually uh, 10, 50, 70, and 21. So my question is, is, why do you attend this talk? Can you tell us why you attend? So probably uh, I'll be able to talk more about something that you would like to know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be waiting. So just a very, very and I would like to check how many participants uh, we have currently. Yeah, uh, I'll give some time for you guys to do this. Can you go to, uh, yeah, to understand more about the sense? Great, this is exactly what we are going to talk about. Can we have like, yep, yeah, data science is a uh, topic is hot. Yep, yeah, I'm going to talk about what is data uh, uh, science and why probably it is hot. Yeah, can we have uh, maybe three more? Okay, we have uh, a lot of participants over here, right? Right, yeah, quite a lot. So can we have three more, uh, this answer to the question? Why do you attend this talk? I know some of you probably just joined and probably, okay, again, guys, how to do it? You need to open your browser. Uh, go to www.menti.com and then uh, when asked about the code, please type 10, 50, 70, and 21. And you'll be able to see the questions as well as to type. Uh, yeah, so we have, I want to better understand the difference between data analytics, data science, and to learn more about uh, what course are available. So we will talk about what is data analytics Data science, uh, machine learning, and AI, how they are different. I just want to know uh, about the DS. This is exactly what we are going to talk about. Can we have the last one? Yep. Then we will go to the second questions. Yeah, as I mentioned, if you join late, okay, you just need to go to www.menti.com. And after you do uh, this uh, URL on any browser, if you use the phone, you can also do the same thing. And then you use the code 105071. 
and then you'll be able to see this so currently i only have four and i believe we have uh quite a lot yeah yes i want to know uh if we can go in uh i want to know if we can go into the industry without it background that's a very very interesting probably i just uh address this uh, uh quickly uh this data science is actually the uh i would say the, the it's not really about it only it's actually the the uh, i would say that this domain is actually the a kind of like uh merge from statistics and then some of the management and some of the it so it is not really the most important thing in fact you can do data science without it and this is going to be uh, more and more popular so since you type over here uh, so i will talk about more if you some of you if you want to talk, type more you can type so i'm going to address this if you don't have any it background can you do data science the answer is yes okay how so quite a lot of things now uh, drag and drop uh, we have like a uh, quite user-friendly something called Orange. Orange is actually a software that actually allow us to do data science, machine learning, and AI without any programming. So I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to read the other one. So this is actually Orange, Orange uh, Data Science. Okay, just very, very quick to answer your questions. You see this? You can download this tool. This tool allow you to do data science without any IT background. So the question is actually, can you, uh, yeah, the question actually here, uh, can you do that? Yes, you can do that. Uh, but if you join us, okay, I come back to, it's a bit slow. I want to see your, just now your question. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you do it? Yes. But if you do have IT background and those statistic background, it will be faster for you to do it. So uh, how do I say faster? The data usually, okay, very, very quick. The data usually that you get can, can be very, very dirty. Talk about clean and dirty data. So in order to clean it, you need to have some IT background. Okay, that's very, very quick. I'll talk about it. And the last one, I uh, want to know the difference between business analytics and data science. Okay, this is very, very uh, interesting. Business analytics in the sense of like, uh, see, talk about computer, information systems okay uh, i'm not very sure whether I, I just assume that you are from uh, computer information system so if you are from uh, cis so you will learn about business analytics so business analytics what is this looking at the processes of the business you analyze the business process and you find out what is uh, say important okay for for you as the business analyst okay to actually to to have a system that can help the business so you have the process probably or uh, this process from uh, input to output take about seven days and then you analyze it hey you say i could use the it to shorten the business process to become like three days or even one day well data science is a bit different data science we rely on data so we get a lot of data and then from the data we analyze the data, uh, the data and how we actually improve uh, this the process by using the data hopefully answer your question okay uh, unfortunately, I, I, if you have some other questions, I hope you can type it later on in the Q&A. So I'll go to the next one. Yeah, please type, guys. Okay, otherwise, uh, yeah, uh, let us know why you want to do this, that, and we will try to address it uh, to answer all the questions so you actually uh, know more about this, okay? Uh, are you going to pursue this yes or no? And if you want to type something, question, you can also type the questions. So again, I hope you have at least five or six uh this uh answer from you guys so if you say yes i want to pursue data science but i don't know uh, whether it's okay cool. is it difficult well okay uh everything that we, if you are background and very very different everything that we we do would be difficult uh for the first time uh I, this is always true whatever you do okay uh if this is the first time you're doing I have, I have to be honest with you, it will be difficult. Uh, but uh, as long as you put efforts, I guess just the same thing, uh, everything that you want to do, if you put efforts, then definitely it will be easier and easier and easier. So I won't be really uh, afraid of the difficulty, the difficulty, okay? It's just the same thing, like when you start something new, okay? 
So this is my quick answer. Yes, I, I have a plan, uh, but I want to understand more about it, okay? You can type more if you would like to understand more. I could uh, try to actually uh, talk more about this if you would like to. Uh, depending if I can cope, since I have no IT background, that's a very good. So, uh, IT background. So we're talking about this is a postgraduate master degree. Uh, frankly speaking, when I was uh, study, uh, studying in uh, Sydney, uh, I studied actually uh, computer information system. Okay? So management information system. I have, uh, I have IT background. But a lot of my peers, they don't have any IT background. Do they graduate? Yes. Do they find a good job? Yes. It's kind of different things. Okay. Uh, I give you an example. For example, if you are doing cybersecurity, you can have no IT background, but still doing cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is another topic actually very, very, I think, uh, interesting, okay? So you can have cybersecurity, you can work in cybersecurity without any IT background. Why? Because cybersecurity is a very, very wide as the uh, domain. So you can do risk uh, analysis, risk management, that you don't need to have IT background. The same thing for the data science. Can you survive without any IT background? Yes. In fact, there is uh, quite a lot of these uh, data science uh, tests. They don't have any IT background. But when we train you over here, okay, in, in our degree, you need to pick it up. Otherwise, you won't be able to pass the degree. So you still need to pick it up. And in our, um, probably later on, uh, Denise or maybe my colleague can actually give you the breakdown about uh, the students, the current students that actually have no IT background, they are actually surviving. You don't have to worry about this. And our lecturer all know that actually we have uh, this population that actually uh, with the IT background, some of you, and some without IT background. So you don't have to worry about it. Uh, how long the course would be? I think it again depends whether you want to do it full time or part time. Probably one year, one year and a half, probably, and two years or three years depending on what you want to probably again my colleague will be able to uh, help you with this yes but i have uh, this bachelor degree already is it better to pursue as a second degree uh, i'm not very sure what does it mean uh, i have a bachelor degree already i believe this is uh, we're talking about the master degree right this is postgraduate uh yeah seminar right but okay Anyway, I'm, I'm trying to answer uh, answer you again. Okay, um, say you want to uh, say you want to considering getting degree uh, in CS with us. Uh, okay, if you have some uh, this degree, I think there is a way for you to actually uh, uh, do it faster. I'm not very sure what depend on what degree you have. So some of the degree that actually you uh, take some of the course probably you can actually. For example, econs, if you have the degree in uh, management, you have econs. Uh, if you want to enroll in uh, CIS, uh, this is Computer Information System, you can actually have this uh, wave. You don't have to do it. So you can do it faster. Again, my colleague will be able to answer this uh, for you. Okay. Uh, I guess I need to stop. Otherwise, uh, we will be running very, very late. Okay. So I'll back to my slide. Uh, let me uh, share the other slide. Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to do this talk uh, interactively, okay? So uh, I'll do a lot of this uh, here and, man, uh, and Kahoot as well. So, okay, we have a, a six question in Kahoot. So the, this, those question is not difficult as long as you uh, attend the, the talk and listen to me, okay? And you'll be able to actually answer those, okay? And for those top three uh, score, okay, this is actually, uh, we will give you Notebook, okay? So the notebook, okay? So by the way, I need to uh, clarify first, okay, the not notebook. The notebook that you are imagining is really not that kind of notebook like the laptop. <laughs> I just need to clarify this, okay? But this is the notebook we, we are talking about, okay? So it's really not the notebook that you're thinking. I need to clarify this, okay? But again, I think uh, this is better than this notebook because why? I think according to my colleague, you will have the notebook with the charger, okay? So this will be better. So we will play with this. So we have some interaction over here, okay? So let's uh, continue.
Okay, very quick. My background, okay. Uh, my colleague uh, mentioned to me. So my uh, this is where actually I completed my degree. Okay, my family was poor. I'm giving scholarship uh, uh, in Taiwan, uh, Australia, and uh, Singapore. I've been with NUS for 20 years. In the past 20 years, I've been in NUS, and my background is IT. So I work in Alcatel and and, and the rest. Okay, I work in uh, Sydney and uh, in uh, Jakarta as well as Taipei. So that's actually very, very quick. I, I am also a researcher. I publish uh, research in health communication, psychology and human computer studies. And I also teach uh, this uh, visual communication uh, with uh, faculty of arts and social sciences in NUS. So this is the blog that written by my students. So you will see quite a lot of things, okay? So this is about the learning guys. So as I mentioned to you, my background is IT. I'm not really doing data science, okay? Can IT people do data science? Well, not really, uh, because they need to have some statistics background. If they are only pure IT, they can't do it. So this is, uh, okay. So uh, I was naively uh, thought that uh, I'll be able to do data science. So actually I thought, oh, I actually know how to do statistics, but I'm a researcher. I also, uh, this is actually a programmer. So I thought, oh, easy. So I joined this Microsoft uh, competition. Uh, this is uh, to predict, uh, this is data science, okay? To predict students' earning. So uh, I submitted my, this is actually the ranking, okay, the ranking. I submitted my score and this ranking, actually, this is actually the difference. This is uh, talking about RMSE. If you learn statistics before, you probably know uh, it stands for root mean square error. This is means actually, this is lower, the better. So if you have zero, you are God. You're predicting every single point accurately. Meaning that actually you predict uh, my salary, for example, uh, uh, 5,000, you predict it accurately. This is actually, uh, this is the difference, $2 only. So you can see that actually this is uh, the right, uh, uh, number one over here. I could predict this uh, student's earning only about $2, $3 differences. Guys, do you know what is my what was my rank the first time I submit this? By the way, you can submit this, uh, one day can submit two numbers. So the first time I submitted it, okay, I thought I'm good, okay. My rank was 150 something, very, very low behind. So again, guys, just like you, go, like all of you, I studied, 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 studied. At the end, I managed to climb here. This is me, number six, okay. Uh, this is number six out of 300, so top 1%. Of the data science competition and of course there are a lot of people behind me over here you can see as i mentioned to you last time when i submitted my rank was a hundred something okay so the number that i submit actually is 19 so way, way below so this is to encourage you to motivate you everything that we need to do we still need to learn and you be able to learn it okay same thing like me i'm still learning so this is the topic that i'm going to uh, uh really cover so the first thing actually is what is data science? Uh, some of you mentioned data science, business uh, analytics, and I talk about the terminologies and uh, how uh, these statisticians uh, see data science and how IT people see data science and uh, about AI. Uh, AI essentially is about uh, sensing, uh, comprehending, acting, and le learning. I will talk about this and some example, and I will uh, close by uh, this topic uh, called supervised and unsupervised learning. So that's about it. Very quick, what is data science? Data science actually is uh, data science or data analytics or machine learning. So according to John Foreman, okay, data science and analytics is the transformation of data using mathematics, statistics into valuable inside decision and products. So this is uh, John Foreman. You see guys, this is there is no IT in, inside here. It's really about mathematics and statistics. So if you don't have IT back, background, you can go inside. It's okay, but with the IT background, you actually stand better chance because why you do things faster, you do things faster. Okay, basically it's allow a computer to find insights from the data without being told or uh, what to look for or program to do. So basically it's really throw the data, we got the insight. As long as you have the data, we got the insight. So what is data? Data, okay, if you work in a company, data is actually like Excel. When you have, for example, uh, students, uh, this is great. Students grade actually uh, A or maybe B or C. They have this grade, right? And they want to see 
which student can actually get A at the end of the, uh, this is the, uh, the degree. So we try to predict this sort of thing. We have the data, the past data that uh, say we have 2000 students, and then we, uh, we actually uh, input those and then try to predict the current students based on the past data. So that's about the data science. We throw in the data and got what we want to without telling the program to look for it, okay? So this is actually about data science. Hopefully you're okay with this, okay? So, uh, okay, this is, as I mentioned to you, different stakeholders, they view data science, okay, differently, okay? Uh, data science, data analytics, for example, over here, talk about data science, data analytics, machine learning, and AI. So data what? So I, I personally think that these two are uh, the, the same, okay? Some other people are very, very precise. They think data analytics, they are all doing analytics, some data science, but here I just make it uh, interchangeably. So uh, on the other hand, his machine learning, there are three different views. Machine learning, uh, uh, Perdo Domingos mentioned, is actually uh, automatically learn program from the data. So as long as you have the data, the data can be your grade, okay? You'll be able to let the machine to learn and predict based on the past data to predict the current students that are actually doing the degree, whether this student can get A at the end of the uh, this uh, course, okay? Uh, while Ripley, Ripley over here mentions slightly a bit different thing. Machine learning is statistics minus any checking models and assumptions. What is this, okay? This is saying that actually uh, machine learning essentially is statistics, but unlike applied statistics, in applied statistics, we always have some assumption. Uh, they call it hypothesis. So according to uh, Ripley, it's the same. We don't do hypothesis. We don't do any assumption. We just get the data and we have the result, okay? Well, uh, here another one, Leserman mentioned, is a totally very different thing. They mentioned the difference between these two fields, the answer is none. As long as we have the data, we can learn from the data. You will see these people have different ideas about the uh, machine learning. Uh, to me, okay, and to you, hopefully, okay, these uh, differences actually is really nothing, okay? It's just the same thing as uh, Wasserman mentioned. There is nothing different about statistics, about the learning from the program, the IT background. This is really talking about learning from the data. As long as you have the data, then you can do some data science, okay? So uh, while AI is a bit different, okay? AI describes both the theory and practice of creating advanced computer system capable of simulating human intelligence. This is saying that actually, okay, uh, the AI currently is very, very smart. They can actually uh, stimulate human intelligence. For example, if you have a uh, Google Home, you can talk to Google Google Home, Google uh, Assistance, right? Hey Google, uh, who is the prime minister in Singapore? They will tell you this is actually, uh, yeah. Uh, for example, they, they will tell you this is actually, my Google is actually running currently. I, I, I just saw it when I say hi. Hey Google, I think some of you using Android probably when you talk about Hey Google, your phone probably responded already. That's what we talk about AI. Try to simulate. And just now when, when I talk, I see I see whatever I talk, okay, whatever, whatever I speak, okay, it's actually, I could see the text on my mobile phone over here. Just, uh, yeah. So this is actually AI, okay? They uh, try to simulate uh, human intelligence, try to understand what I'm talking about and give the response of, on, onto it. So I'll go deep into it, okay? So here, uh, artificial intelligence is collection of advanced technology that allows machine to sense, comprehend, act, and learn. So what is this? I make it very, very simple. Sense means they actually input, comprehends, process, act, or put, and learn actually the feedback. Make it very, very simple. So the sensing over here, okay, we need to have the input. The input can be a webcam to see your face. Oh, this is Julian and comprehend. This is Julian, act, open the door. And then say, okay, now, okay, uh, it's the same thing. Say I have the system, say this is the gate system where uh, I think uh, in uh, Taobao, uh, Alibaba, they all use this already. So the attendance, uh, this is uh, when people want to work in uh, Alibaba. So they just uh, have the face with them, go over there. Oh, you know, this is the employee and comprehend. Oh, this is actually Julian. Uh, the, this is the staff ID is 00723 or something, okay? And open the door, okay? So what happened if there is a new uh, employee, okay? 
So that sense, okay, uh, cannot comprehend huh? who is this employee. Probably the HR have not put into the database yet. Act, of course, there is not no, nothing open. The uh, the door is still locked. And uh, at the end, the machine learn. Oh, this is actually the new employee. Uh, so next time when this new employee come, they again sense, comprehend, act, opening, and they don't learn anymore. So that's actually the AI. The whole thing is just like very, very simple. So I get this from Accenture. And while machine learning over here is a branch of AI, it's a branch of the AI that provides systems with the ability to learn without being programmed. So here there is no program at all. So it's, uh, you're talking, talking about uh, the uh, IT background, you don't really need to program this. As long as you have the data, you'll be able to actually get the result. So commonly machine learning algorithms are data-driven learning system able to classify to understand oh this is uh, say just now I, I use the grade right or classify students oh these students are based on the background these students is likely to get uh, a or the gpa is about three or these students based on the uh, this uh, the pass is going to get uh, maybe the gpa two so this is actually to classify the new data set into a set of categories so the, this is machine learning and machine learning can be actually divided into two one is supervised, the an, another one in, is unsupervised learning. Okay, so uh, this is at least there are two things that actually we can divide machine learning into. One is supervised, the other one is unsupervised. So what is uh, uh, supervised learning? Supervised learning here. Supervised learning is actually machine learning algorithm that make use of label training data. So label data is where we have positive or negative example of the target categories. So what's target categories is Categories that we want to predict, for example, uh, we want to predict whether this is cat or dog. So we label this. So what we do, we have the data. Okay, this is uh, say 1,000 dog and 1,000 cats. And we name it, what is dog, 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 cat, 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 cat. cat. And we throw it to the system, it's 2,000. 1,000 is cat, another 1,000 is dogs. So we throw it to the systems. And this is actually, we label it, I mean, actually we label this dog, this is the uh, cats. So, and we throw it to the system and we uh, get a new image. For example, I have a new cat that I've just bought from the, uh, the pet shop, okay? I took the uh, picture, upload it, okay? And then the machine will be able to predict, oh, this is actually cat, not dog. So that's actually supervised. So we label it. So uh, uh, what is unsupervised learning? Again, it's a machine learning algorithm. But this is without label. So it means actually we have 1,000 cat, 1,000 dog. We don't label it as dog, 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 cat, cat, cat. We just throw it to the system. And the system will be able to say, divide, hey, there are two specific categories, but they don't know this is actually cat, this is actually dog. They don't know. Okay, the system, this is, they don't know. But they know these are two these different species. Okay, so again, I will, uh, again, uh, after this, I will uh, have the Kahoot. So yeah, guys, again, you need to understand there are two types of machine learning. One is supervised learning, where we have the label data. That's supervised learning, label. Uh, label data, quite a lot of people, when they learn by themselves, they don't understand what is label data. I make it very, very simple. Label data is something that we want to predict, okay? If there is something that we want to predict, all dogs, cats, and yes. If there's nothing that we want to predict, then we use unsupervised learning, okay? So that's uh, about it, okay? So again, uh, I summarize it. Artificial intelligence is about sensing, comprehend, act, and learn. So now I would have Kahoot. Okay. And how to play Kahoot? If you never played Kahoot before, you need to go to now. Okay. We can prepare it. Go to HTTPS and you type uh, this is Kahoot.it. And uh, I will give you the pin. You enter the pin uh, number and you enter the nickname. If you don't want to, Kahoot will give you the nickname. And I will give you the two, uh, two questions, okay, shown in the screen, and you choose the answer by the shape. So very, very simple, okay? Enter the pin, nickname, and you see the questions, and then you answer it. That's about it, okay? Let's play with it. So I have these two questions, and the qu two questions just now I mentioned to you, I summarized it into uh, two things. There are two types of machine learning. One is this, the other one is, yeah, supervised and supervised, and then we have so-called labeled, and those sort of thing, okay? Ready to play? So I will uh, show it to you, the uh, Yeah, 
my Kahoot. Let me see. It should be this one. Okay. So I'm going to give you the pin. It's here already. Probably this one. Okay, already. Classic. Yeah. So loading the pin now. So guys, again, to join this uh, game, you just go to www.kahoot.it. So currently I'm, by the way, guys, we don't know who you are. Don't worry, just play with it, okay? So you can just uh, join, okay? We don't know whether you are, yeah, yeah who you are. So you make mistakes, it's, it's okay, okay? Perfectly fine. And we don't know who you are, so just join. Uh, as many of uh, you can join it will be good so uh, let me take a look at uh, while waiting for you I'll, I'll take a look at how many uh, participants I have done roughly I want most of you to join okay I will be waiting so let me take a look at can I see how many participants over here currently I only have five of you joining Can I have like one or two more so we can start? Okay. So I guess today the participants. Uh, okay, let's let's do it now. Okay. Uh, can can I have one more, probably? Maybe let's see. Now I only have like how many? Six. Can I have seven, please? I promise you, this is not going to be that difficult. Okay, so don't worry. Okay, so let's start. Okay. The quiz over here. Two type of machine learning are just answer one is sufficient. Okay, whether it's supervised, unsupervised, spatial, or visual. I have one more. Yeah. Okay, so only one of you uh, answers uh, this uh, uh, spatial. Probably you just uh, join, okay? So the rest of you are correct. So uh, yeah, only one. Uh, either you answer supervised, or unsupervised, these are correct. So meaning actually you really pay attention. We have six questions, but I'm going to show it to you only two. Uh, and Let's take a look at the next one. Oh, funny boy actually here is the, yeah, not really much difference, right? It's really about how fast you are answering it, right? So let's take a look at, uh, yeah, the F over here currently is actually good, okay? Uh, funny, focus, yeah, and majestic ears, okay? So let's take a look at the next question. What learning needs to have labeled data? Only one answer is correct uh, we have four answers currently can we have two more answers yep one more probably yep so five of you got this one correct uh okay so only supervised remember we give the label uh of, over there the label data something that we want to predict we put dog 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 cats 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 and that's about it not bad all uh, most of you get it correctly so let's take a look at uh, who is actually uh, leading. As mentioned, we will give you a notebook for the first three. Okay, slightly uh, focus over here, slightly uh, slower, but I think uh, you can catch up, okay? So, so far, uh, you are doing great. So you can have 1,000 plus minutes actually you answer correctly. So I'll give the pep to all of you, okay? And let's continue. Again, probably I need to share the other one better. Uh, let me see. Share the other one better. This is the one. Uh, okay. So again, yeah, I disable this is now. Yeah.
Okay. Just now you did quite okay for question number one and number two. Let's continue, okay? As I mentioned, it won't be difficult. Guys, just now I mentioned to you, sense, comprehend, learn, act and learn, okay? We don't put the, 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 the learn over here. So this is essential. Basically, sensing, as I mentioned to you, is input. Comprehend actually is the process. Act is the output. And learn is the feedback, okay? So sense over here, according to essential, uh, this is actually computer visions and audio processing. For example, as now I mentioned, this is actually perceive how actually the machine perceive the world by acquiring and processing images, sound and speech. Okay, and use the uh, the, the use of facial recognition. This is one of the example. So some of the country uh, they uh, before the COVID, okay, they actually use this uh, broader uh, control immigration. To look at uh, the facial and then we'll be able to do that i think we will probably will have it uh, maybe between johor and Sing very very soon uh, this is to sense and comprehend oh this is actually uh, our worker that actually come to singapore to work for us so and then act uh, open the gate those sort of things so this is actually comprehend using maybe natural language processing when i say, say something to google google will be able to answer and then to interfere engines that enable AI to analyze and understand the information collected. So this is, uh, this technology is used to the power the language. This is uh, an example using the NLP. NLP means actually natural language processing. We say to Google, hey Google, uh, I'm sad and Google probably will try to actually make you happier, understand that you are sad, those sort of thing. Okay, the act and an AI system that can action, as I mentioned to this, the output, actually through the technologies such as expert system. So this is the examples, autopilot features and assisting braking uh, capabilities. For example, uh, when we have the uh, the car, that is actually fully, uh, actually auto. Now the, nowadays we have uh, this kind of car already. Uh, I think the, in, in Shenzhen, I saw that actually there, there, there is uh, this uh, taxi without any uh, human at all. So when they see this uh, pedestrian uh, uh, crossing the street, immediately can stop, break. So this is to act, to see the person, uh, okay, and break it immediately. To see leaf falling from this uh, trees, uh, probably can like uh, in fall in some of the country like China, the leaf can be a lot, okay? They know this is leaf, they could actually go through the, through the leaf, okay? But this is human or cat, then the car can stop. So this is very, very cool things actually. Uh, we are having so if you are joining our degree these are the things that you can do okay uh, after you graduate so uh come back to this again okay guys this is another example so i will do this example so you can ask natural uh, uh, this is a uh, network to see your photo good or bad okay so this is actually uh, another application of the ai this is the example just now i give you an example so let's take a look at uh, very very quick i'm sharing with you some of the uh, things that actually you can do I hope you can see this one, okay? And yeah, maybe I just close the Kahoot. Oh, oh not yet. I'm sorry, close this one. Let's see. Let, let me stop uh, sharing for a while. So. This is just I mentioned to you, uh, one of the uh, AI driven website. So I'm going to show it to you one more time. This is PowerPoint. Okay. All right, I should be able to see that. Yeah. So do you see this guy? Okay. So this is actually here. Uh, I'm going to play with this. So just now I uh, put uh, one of the picture. I think this is a pretty. Okay? To me, this is pretty. And uh, the website actually says this is not pretty. Okay, not awesome. Not pretty. Maybe it's not pretty. It's not really awesome. It's not really. Uh, it's different from pretty. Probably it's not awesome. Okay, so this is actually no. It's a woman, one person, and musical instrument. It's no, it's actually music. very cool, right? No, this is musical instruments and Caucasian. Yeah, no about this. 
a musician, adult, dressed and smiling, so it's uh, portrait cheerful. So, but again, it's not awesome, okay? So if I try another one, so let me see. I try another one. Okay, let me, this thing over here, I need to hide. Okay, cool. Um, better, much better. Okay, guys, uh, when you see this, okay, so I will try to get uh, another picture. This is uh, just now uh, Taylor Swift. I try to get this uh, Ariana Grande. Okay, so I copy the URL or photo. I want to see as the this website whether she is actually cool, awesome. Okay, I put it over here. You say women again, one person adult looking at the camera, the eyes portrait one woman and then fashion a model because probably here, but cool, right? Understand this is actually quite fashionable. The, the dress something very very interesting. Okay, brown hair again female uh, again very very cool human face and studio shot this this is very very good right to understand this is the keyword from here okay i get another one uh, this time is guy so yeah you know this is a justin Bieber. and ask the website whether can see whether gender correct or not correct first time okay so hey okay. paste it just now i believe oh something wrong with this let me try it one more time. Yeah, sometimes it, 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 yeah. Okay. No, man, cool, right? One person, lifestyle, lifestyle, sitting over here, the lifestyle maybe, yeah. And it's not really other. I don't know how it's become women like this. It's not very, very sure whether Justin Bieber is men or women. Tattoo, wow, this is cool, right? Now this is tattoo and young adult. So this is uh, awesome, okay? So you can see that actually just now with uh, use uh, Taylor Swift and then uh, Ariana Grande and all zero. And this is 0 0.8. If I put another picture, it's our SIM. Let me take a look at our SIM. Better than zero. Let me see our SIM like this. This is the one. So that's why I use it as my background. So you will see, okay? this is 0.2%. So this is very good, okay? Architecture, modern. My, uh, building this is better than Taylor uh, Swift, okay. <laughs> and this is a built uh, structure, famous place, famous place. Is this SIM is very famous place. Outdoors, city life, glass, yeah, a lot of glasses and material. So it's quite, quite. Uh, guys, why this is not uh, awesome? And then why just now uh, Taylor Swift? To me, actually, she's very, very beautiful like this. Okay, and you see the smile, very, very. Okay, and the dress over here. This is very, very expensive dress with uh, a lot of flowers like this. Okay. I'm not very sure why. Let's take a look at what is this, okay? How they actually uh, put this, okay? Awesome over here, according to the website, is depend on, hmm, come on, okay. Surprised by the result, the service doesn't measure the coolness or beauty of the person, but it cares about the brightness. This is bright. Contrast, there's uh, black and white, noise, and so on. Service does not uh, dedicate uh, for this, okay? Again, uh, yeah. This AI can only see whether the photographs, they have enough exposure, enough balance. And if yes, for example, like this, this is awesome. Okay, you will see this 99%. This is very, very beautiful. But this beautiful lady and a handsome guy, 0%. So that's actually one of the example. So I'll give you more example about uh, the AI. So I go back to my PowerPoint slide. Okay, this is another example, seeing AI. So this is by Microsoft. This is actually helping the blind people uh, to see the tech, to see the money, etc. So this is uh, by Microsoft. If you see, uh, this is uh, rating is quite good, uh, 4.6. And a lot of people actually say this is actually quite good, uh, this is uh, things, okay? Let's take a look at uh, more, okay? So uh, this is the AI uh, seeing, uh, yeah, if you see this is the app, apps just now, seeing AI, the apps call. So what is this? Let's take a look at this. Seeing AI is a Microsoft research project for people with visual impairments. The app narrates the world around you by turning the visual world into an audible experience. Point your phone's camera, select a channel, and hear a description. The app recognizes saved friends. Jenny near top right, three feet away. Describes the people around you, including their emotions. 28-year-old female wearing glasses looking happy. 
It reads text out loud as it comes into view, like on an envelope, Ken Lawrence, P.O. Box, or a room entrance, Conference 2005, or scan and read documents like books and letters. The app will guide you and recognize the text with its formatting. Top and left edge is not visible. Hold steady. Lease agreement. This agreement executed. When paying with cash, the app identifies currency bills. 20 US dollars. When looking for something in your pantry or at the store, use the barcode scanner with audio cues to help you find what you want. Campbell's tomato soup. When available, hear additional product details. Heat in microwave bowl on height. And even hear descriptions of images in other apps like Twitter by importing them into Seeing AI. A close-up of Bill Gates. Finally, explore our experimental features. Like scene descriptions to get a glimpse of the future. I think it's a young girl throwing a frisbee in the park. Experience the world around you with the Seeing AI app from Microsoft. That's cool, right? And then uh, help quite a lot of people as well. I believe they actually this kind of uh, application. So let's continue with this. So after this, uh, we would have the. Okay, let me share the uh, another screen, my PowerPoint slide. Um, yeah, this is the one, okay? Yeah, so guys, now Kahoot time. Now question number three and four. So let's continue, okay? Just now, I think uh, there are uh, two F, that's one is focus uh, and the other is funny. So hopefully this, uh, they'll be able to answer question number three and four uh, better or faster this time. So let me uh, do the sharing again. I believe it's here. Yep. So Kahoot, let's continue to play. So this is you just now, the funny. Let's continue to play. Question number three and four. AI is collection of IT uh, that allows machine to answer. Answer one only, okay? As long as you get this one correct, any answer, okay? Three answers already. Four. Can we have? Yep. Uh, okay. Two of you answer incorrectly, but most of you answer correctly. So, so wait, sorry, a second. Okay. No one. Sorry. 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 My wrong. Okay. Sorry, guys. I am really hungry already. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all of you got it correctly. Okay. Uh, yeah. There's no smile. All of you got it correctly. It's my fault. Okay. It's my fault. Comprehend accents. They are all correct. Okay. So I'm hungry already. So good. All of you. Okay. So let's do the next one. And hopefully all of you again will do great as, as this. Okay. So let's take a look at the next one. What is the name of application talking camera for the blind from Microsoft? Is it called scan me, seeing me, see me, smell me? Mm, smell very nice. Okay. <laughs> Okay, actually call seeing me. Uh, see me or, or almost right. Okay, it's uh, again. This is the name of the product. I won't really uh, blame you for not be able to answer it. In fact, if I uh, if I'm greater, probably I will give you half the mark. In this uh, see me, but Kahoot, we cannot do that. Okay, so seeing AI is actually the name of the product from the Microsoft. And of course, uh, there are uh, some other product uh, here. Uh, I think uh, this is another one. Very, very cool product. If you uh, want to help someone with the vision problem, this is another one. Be My Eyes. Similar to uh, this uh, Seeing AI. And you will see here a lot, a lot of people say this is good. If you will see here, this is about 20,000 of the people that actually install it and use it and get 4.6. And it actually features in... Things like uh, The Guardian. The Guardian mentioned about this. I tried Be My Eyes, the popular app that uh, pairs blind people with the helper. You see the color of the shirt and etc. It's really, very, very cool. This is life-changing for those people. So we are actually doing something that's actually meaningful when you talk about data science and AI. Okay. So, yeah, just now I can go back to my uh, Kahoot over here to see who are leading currently. Still, we have two more questions later on, the last two. So currently, wow, you will see the magic owl. So very, very fast and answer it correctly for the past two questions. Congrats, okay? Uh, but these two are not bad, okay? It's just like the finger probably 
uh, the click of the mouse probably maybe you feel hungry okay some of you okay <laughs> so slower a bit okay hopefully yeah okay this is cool okay so let's uh, do a presentation uh, okay and do more questions okay so this is the uh, my slides yep and let's take a look at this so this is the process of data analytics ai as so we all follow this okay so first actually uh, before we start with anything as i mentioned as long as you have data then you are ready to go and do this what called supervised on unsupervised learning this is the one that remember guys supervised learning is something with the label and supervised learning is unlabeled we already learned this okay and this is the algorithm that we use for our supervised learning and this is the these are the algorithm that we use for the sorry unsupervised and this is for the supervised so first, before we do anything, we need to have data. Data acquisition. The data, we can't do the data science. We can't do uh, machine learning. We can't do AI. Data is the center of the things that we, we are doing. Okay. So we need to identify the data. Oh, the data is actually, uh, we want to predict uh, who is going to get the GPA uh, three. So the data is actually the past grade from the students. Identify. Oh, this is it. Okay. And we need to clean it. If the uh, if some of the students empty, uh, for example, for the course empty, we don't have it. So we need to actually clean it. Whether this is B or uh, C, we need to actually have those kind of information. And this is the most difficult part, guys. Okay, you all think that actually this is the uh, this hard here uh, when we do the analyzing, when we do the process over here, is the most uh, difficult part. No, these are the very very identifying is not that easy. Cleaning the data is actually very very difficult and after we do this we need to visualize to take a look at the relationship for example oh i see actually uh because uh this is a single parent okay say we have the data about the students uh, this uh background the family income and then by the single parent oh single parents seems to be when we take a look at the correlation seems to do better because uh, probably want, want to help the mom etc uh, they really put a lot of effort so there's some Visualization we can see over here, single parents, and then with both parents, single parents, the GPA higher. Uh, so we, we need to have some, have some kind of like feeling what the data are telling us. So this is where we actually visualize the data. And after visualizing, and there's some, some pattern we can see, we can start doing analysis. This is the data science over here. We can do unsupervised learning using k-means, PCA, ARO. We can do unsupervised learning using linear regression and uh, decision tree, et cetera. And then after that, we have the score. We take a look whether this is actually good uh, prediction. If not, probably something wrong with the data. We collect more data, we go back. If good, then we can start making prediction. What is making prediction? We have the new data, the new students with the background, and we can predict the students, the GPA would be like three or two, et cetera. So these are all the analytics process. Okay, I have uh, here, uh, okay. I, uh, okay, I have quite a lot of this uh, chat, so I will uh, quickly take a look at the chat. Okay, yep. Guys, okay, uh, okay, this is the things, okay. Uh, very, very quick, this is as I mentioned to you. Discovery, learning, and deployment, okay. As I mentioned to you, this is actually the, uh, yeah, this is the, uh, the, the longest process. Again, guys, uh, here, this is according to the uh, uh, leader over here. This is actually, there's a joke, 80% of the science is about cleaning the data, 20% is about the clean, uh, cleaning the data. So this is according to Kaggle uh, CEO, Anthony. So in reality varies, but again, cleaning data is actually much higher portion. So you will see that actually, it's not about the analysis, about the cleaning data actually is the, the most okay. So let's uh, take a look at uh, uh, very, very quick. I'm going to summarize this. Machine learning, as I mentioned to you, there are two types. It's a kind of revision now, I make it very fast now. So one is here, we have, this is say the iris. Iris, we measure the sepal length, the flowers, the sepal length, petal length, we measure it. What we don't tell, what is the, we don't know the label and the computer can actually help us. This is what we call unsupervised learning. Supervised learning, we put the name, or this is cat, dogs, we put iris and doza. For see color, this again, this is called supervised learning and this is unsupervised learning. We don't have the label, we have the label. This is, we have cat, dogs, here we don't have cat dogs. Computer uh, tell us there are two species over here, uh, cat and dogs, but they don't know the name. But here computer predicted with the name. So that's the difference between unlabeled, this unlabeled, 
and label data, unsupervised and supervised data. Okay, so uh, typically, guys, there are two types of supervised learning. Supervised learning can be divided into two types, and this is important, guys. One is called classification, and the other one is called regression. So how different it is? Both has something that we want to predict. This is called target. Remember, this time I mentioned to the label. This is the call label, the label. Both the same have the label. This is why this is called supervised learning. If there's no label, unsupervised learning. So this is the label. Depend if the label numbers, this is what we call regression. If the label actually is uh, categorical, like uh, this cat dogs, this is what we call classification. We classify dog cats. We classify with Sandoza, Aries, uh, Versicolor. And if it's if talking about particular number, GPA numbers, 3.5, 3.8, this is what we call regression. If talking about cat and dogs, we predict this classification. Okay, with that, classification, regression. Regression, numbers, we're predicting numbers. Classification, we're predicting categorical. So this is what we call supervised learning. We have something we want to predict. We have some labels, okay? Very, very quick. Again, guys, the supervised learning over here, we have, uh, we tell, this is a circle, this is a cross. So we, uh, and then computer give us a boundary. And supervised learning, we don't know what is this. Based on the distance, computer tell us there are three instances. So this is actually uh, unsupervised and unsupervised learning. Uh, again, guys, to summarize, guys, this is the part, okay, where we have 80% cleaning. The, uh, this is uh, the part that actually we do some learning and it's the part where we do deployment. Uh, guys, the last question that we have, okay, uh, question number six and seven. So guys, okay, uh, let's take a look at the Kahoot and try to play with it now, okay? The last one. Which data analytic process takes more than 80% of the time? Data cleaning, test and find score, data visualization, training and data. So we have three answers now. Four answers. Can we have two more? Remember just now about uh, identifying data and we need to data cleaning is actually the... Yeah. Can I, can I have two more? One more? Okay, great. Oh, uh, most of you get it correct. So let's take a look at the next one. My, oh, magic all, still. Okay. The rest of you still the same, okay? Uh, the last one, last chance for you to get uh, the highest score, okay? So what can be divided into two. One is regression, the other one is... One is regression, the other one is... Is it regression? Something wrong with it, okay? Regression and regression. Classification, hypothesis, analysis. Can we have the last one? Oh, sorry. I have not shared my screen, right? But I think uh, some of you uh, continue already. Oh, my apology, okay? Okay. Most of you got it correctly. Let's take a look at the score currently okay podium over here we have oh funny managed to the finger okay oh the same magic all okay cool and the last one i think is f uh focus up few of you would get the notebook from us uh, Ju uh julian we will need yep. you to share the screen i think we can't see the winner Okay, let me uh, see. I have not shared it, probably. Let me see. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, just now share. Okay, so well played. So, if I'm back to the podium, so you'll be able to see again one more time. Is the first one actually is the funny boa. Sorry, the, the, the third, one, third one. Magic all. And then the first one is actually is... Yes, no. Focus. Okay. Sorry guys, okay, just now I announced uh, incorrectly. The third, uh, come from the third, second, and the first. I thought first, second, third. So focus, alpaca is actually number one. I apologize for just now, okay. Uh, okay, I think I need to stop now. I've been talking quite a lot, okay. <laughs> and my peer telling me quick, 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 okay. Uh, yes, and I will give it back to you, June. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Julian, for sharing your insightful sharing. And uh, we actually, um, for all the audience who are still with us, do you have any question regarding the class? 
uh, please feel free to type it out at the site, uh, the Q&A section. And uh, meanwhile, while we wait for some of the questions, uh, perhaps we can actually invite my colleague, Denise, to share her screen and share a little bit about the Master of Science in Data Science from University of London. So earlier on, Dr. Julian's session, uh, there are some questions, you know, uh, some of you are interested in the program itself. So this will be a good opportunity for you to have a better understanding of what does the program entails, what are some of the information that you need to know, you know, uh, while you're doing your research. So hand it over to you, Denise. Thank you, June. Welcome, everybody. I hope you really enjoyed the session. I, I enjoyed too. So if there are more questions, do keep it coming at the chat. And uh, Dr. Julian Lee will be with us throughout the session. And um, you know, at the end of the session, we will take your questions. Right, I'm Denise, the Senior Manager for the um, SIM UOL programs. And um, right now, I would like to share more about the MSc in Data Science. Earlier in the session, we saw that some of you typed in questions, wanting to know more about the program, right? So this is the time for you to uh, stay tuned to what I've got to share. Right, so University of London, Goldsmiths, SIM. Wow, three institutions. How do we collaborate together to run the MSc program? So each of the institutions do have a role to play. So for University of London, it has been around actually for more than 180 years. And you know, you um, do you know Nelson Mandela? Do you know Mahatma Gandhi? Well, they were the alumni of the University of London. In fact, for right now, head of states, uh, we've got government officials that have gone through the doors of University of London. They're alumni of the university. For University of London, it is the um, administrative body for the whole range of UOL programs. It manages the administrative side of things, for example, your registration, your exam uh, administration, even for graduation, right? So University of London is important. It awards the degree to you. What about Goldsmiths? Goldsmiths is the academic college that provides academic direction to the MSc in data science program. So this includes um, providing the contents, confirming the syllabus, getting the videos and the readings and all ready for you. We work closely with Goldsmiths and uh, we have regular meetings with Goldsmiths uh, module leaders, program directors as well. What about SIM? What do we do? We provide the campus, right? We also have um, workshops. We provide, most importantly, our experts, our lecturers, you know, to conduct classes for you to help you in your University of London program. In fact, Dr. Julian Lin is our course leader for the MSc in data science. He's also, uh, he will also be teaching on the MSc program. So at SIM, if you're a full-time student, you can enjoy uh, the wide range of activities, clubs, right? So let's talk more about the program at SIM. So the University of London is a federation of 17 colleges. They are all highly ranked in QS world ranking, or even at times, um, times higher education ranking. So at SIM, we partner three colleges, LSE, UCL, and Goldsmiths. So for the master's program, we collaborate with Goldsmiths actually for 28 years. We have been in partnership with the Department of Computing at Goldsmiths for 28 years. And last year, we launched the MSc in Data Science. We also launched the BSc in Computer Science. Now, SIM, if you're already not aware, we have 5,500 students studying the UOL programs at SIM. So in fact, the UOL Regional Center is also based at SIM. You, if you see the logo at the corner of my slide, top right-hand corner, it says 35. Well, this is a milestone for us at um, SIM, we have partnered University of London for 35 years. We have about 40,000 alumni that have gone through the UOL program at SIM. Now, about employment rates. For our undergrad Goldsmiths program, more than 90% of our graduates found a job within six months. Rich experience. 
Well, when you study at SIM, you see a vibrant, uh, a vibrant campus. We have got activities. There's great academic support for the students. In fact, this is a slide showing uh, actually the achievers event. We had really good results last year. 304, 304 first class honours graduates. And then you could also see that our students topped the world in the exams. In fact, for that 48 of them who were academic achievement recipients, we got £250 for London for a job well done for all the papers that they did in the exams last year. Right, why study data science? I, I suppose you have heard a lot from Julian and you have learned a lot. So I just quickly go through four points on uh, why we, we, we should study this data science. Well, the skills is in high demand. And then, you know, the professions could be from a wide range of industry, okay? So you also learn about data analytics, data visualization, and machine learning predictive models. You learn advanced data analytics, without overloaded information that will soon be outdated. So Goldsmith's pride itself with providing you with the latest trends, latest information, and so that you can immediately activate that and execute that in the workplace. For our program, there are two intakes, April as well as October. So right now we are looking at an October intake uh, if you're keen to join the program. Now earlier, we had uh, participants asking how long is the program? So for the data science program, there are actually two other specializations. You see artificial intelligence, there could also be financial technology. Now, how long does it take? If you take a master's, it's about two years. If you take a postgrad diploma, there are eight modules, you complete it in one and a half years. For postgrad cert, four modules, you complete it in one year. So we'll talk more about it in a while. Right, let's look at the program structure for MSc Data Science. You could see that there are six core and compulsory modules. So let's take a look at it closely. There's maths and stats for data science. Remember, Dr. Julia Lin earlier talked about, it's not about IT, it's about you need maths, you need statistics. Then there's machine learning, data program in Python, big data analysis, then there's data science research topics, data visualization. And then for masters, MSc in data science students, you've got four electives. You can pick from the range as listed. Now for master's students, you need to do a final year project. Now, what about the data science and FinTech program structure? You have got seven uh, modules that's relevant, that's compulsory. So now you could see that there's mathematics or financial markets that is important blockchain programming, financial data modeling. And then you have got three electives to choose from. What about the data science and AI? So for that, you need to take on artificial intelligence, neural networks. These are the two additional if you need to take, if you wish to sign on for the AI program. And then you have got three electives as well. Right, earlier we talked about Goldsmiths College. You, uh, SIN, can't run the show just alone, not on silo. We really need to work with University of London. In fact, uh, this coming Wednesday, no, sorry, this Thursday, we are having a meeting with the program director as well as the module leaders. So I have a photo here of the various uh, module leaders for the program. And at the bottom, uh, left-hand side, Professor Robert Zimmer. Well, he's the program director for the MSc in Data Science. Right, now let's talk about program details. So the intake is every April or every October. We run the program on a part-time basis, right? And the delivery mode, well, it could be seminar style and definitely there'll be online self-study because the University of London programs, they offer um, lots of materials for you online. So you're expected to review the videos, the quizzes, the readings, before you step into class. There will be workshops for you. There'll be consultations as well. Loading wise, so what does that mean? So in April, say you were to join, say April to September, this is a six month program. April to September, you take three modules. Okay, so three modules, if you do the master's program, it'll take you about two years to complete. The timetable wise, you attend lessons every alternate week. But I would say, just imagine you have lessons every week. 
across 22 weeks. It's just that maybe this week you have one module, next week you have two modules to study, right? And your classes could be in the evenings, weekday evenings, or could be on Saturdays. Exams. There will be exams. Exams will be in mid-March for those who started in October, and it will be mid-September for those who started the program in October. Now, here's a, a, an overview of the assessments. In general, for all the modules, there's a 30% coursework requirement. So you can do that in class. Uh, lecturers will provide consultations to you. And then there's written exam as well, 70%. For final project, it's the reverse. The project work itself is 70%. Then there's a written exam and that's 30%. What about the grading scheme? So for, because this is a master's program, so it goes by distinction, merit, pass or fail. Now, you could see that uh, the highest score, the highest uh, grade would be distinction. That means you scored a mark of 70 and above. This is how the degree cert look like. It will mention, of course, definitely your name, that it was conducted by University of London, and that um, Goldsmiths College uh, provides the academic direction. Now, on top of that, we at SIM provide you with an additional cert. That is the SIM Certificate, Statement of Academic Completion, right? Why did we uh, give this to students? We have students who say that, you know, there are so many masters out there on Coursera, online. So it is precious that they have a face-to-face -face class, you know, with an institution. And they say that uh, job uh, recruiters, you know, ask to see whether ask whether the program that they took, is it online or is it face-to-face? -face? So this cert from SIM proves that you are a, uh, a student that studied the program with SIM. Now, you would wonder, now would the program, the Masters of Science in uh, MSc in Data Science, would it help you in your future career? I would say so. Now, there are a few things that I would like to reiterate. Now, by taking the program, it gives you a firm grounding in the theory of data mining, statistics, and machine learning. You learn to create models, to predict future trends, develop predictive applications, and not just descriptive. You've got hands-on experience of real-world applications, such as social media, biomedical, and financial data. And then you have the opportunity to work with industry standard software tools. Right now, let's talk about entry requirements. Basically, there are two entry routes. You know, earlier, uh, quite a few of you asked whether you need an IT background. Well, the answer is here. There's entry route one, entry route two. For entry route one, for you, if you have a relevant subject, such as computing, data science, it means that you are an entry route one student. Entry route students would be people like me. I've got a social science uh, degree. I have to go through entry route two. Now, entry route two means you have a degree uh, in a subject other than uh, IT, computer, uh, data science. Okay? And there's a requirement from university. It says you need to have second class honors, UK equivalent. So if you have an Australian degree, uh, it's distinction, merit, no worries. Just give us the transcript will be able to assist you. Now, I just wanted to say that we do have some candidates who has a first degree, but they didn't do quite well. They've got third, third class honours. Not to worry, put in your application because London will review it and let you know whether you need to have a top up to that. Now, so top up, what do I mean by that? I'm an entry group two student, for example. I have a degree that is non-IT, non-data science. I need to do this other program. Now you see it on the screen, it says foundations of data science. K means clustering in Python. So this means I have no background, but University of London would like me to sign on to Coursera, uh, foundations of data science, this particular program. It takes about six weeks for you to complete the program. At the end of which, when you attain a cert of completion, pay a fee of USD 49, and you will, with that cert and your application, uh, you should be admitted uh, into the UOL MSc program. 
right? So for those of you out there who would like to know a lot more about Python, because what we understand is that for the MSc program, there's quite a fair bit of Python. You can take a screenshot over there and you can um, pick up Python along the way. So later, perhaps maybe uh, Dr. Julian, you can explain about the program, the technical aspects or something about Python to us. Right, the overall fee, okay, um, if you start with a PG cert, if you decide that, okay, I think I'll just do the one-year program, four modules, then it costs about 13100 If you decide to do the PG diploma, post-grad diploma, that's about 25900 The full master's is 36400 As usual, we do not get you to pay immediately up front. You pay every semester. Okay, depending on the semester that you enroll in, you pay according to, basically, most of you will pay for three modules. So just pay for three modules and uh, we go on from there. Right, application. Okay, application has started. Our next intake is October 2021. Right, so um, before I go to the end of the session, I just want to highlight for entry route two students, people like me, I should join only in April. So for this October, if you are an entry route one student, you can join this October. If you are an entry route student, you should join in April next year. All right. So I think I've come to the end of the session. Um, let me stop share and let's see whether there are questions from the floor. Uh, June, are there any questions? Yes, there is uh, one question. Just give me a minute. So um, I think you actually did uh, share about this during the slides just now. What is the requirement fees for this degree? What is the tuition fee? Oh, okay. Let me share screen again. It's about 30,000 um, depending. Okay, it's, let, let, let me share screen. So for those of you who are still around, if you have any other question regarding the program, just feel free to type it out on the Q&A session and then we will address that later on. Yeah. So, Denise? Yep. Okay. For a post-grad PG cert, it costs 13000 PG diploma, 25900 MSc, 36400 Yeah, so Apita, I hope this has answered your question. And I guess the best part about this program is that uh, you can take it um, by modular basis. So you can start with a cert to a PG diploma, then to a, you know, a full master degree within two years, it depending on your commitment uh, at work. And also we have another question. Um, so someone said that maybe I have missed out. How long is the university course for diploma holders? Um, oh, diploma holders. Do you think the participant meant PG diploma? Yes. I Let me... Uh, so, Loon, I might have need you to uh, rephrase your question so we are not able to understand. Are you holding a diploma? Or are you referring to a postgraduate diploma uh, for this data science program? Okay, so I assume uh, the participant is asking about the postgrad deep. That will be about one and a half years. Okay, so if the participant is currently a diploma holder, he needs to get a first degree and then move on to take the master's. Yeah, you're right. And uh, moving on to the next question, Christopher has mentioned that uh, for the entry requirement, whether it's Route 1 or Route 2, uh, are those for the Master of Science portion only or do they apply for both the CERT and the Diploma? It applies to the CERT, the Diploma and the Master's, to all three categories. Yeah, so uh, whether you are coming in through the Entry Route 1 or Entry Route 2, uh, it actually, you know, you are able to just, um, you know, go for part of the program to get a certificate or a po postgraduate diploma. Or, you know, if your time allows you to complete to the master degree, you can also go for it with two years. So any other questions? 
and not to worry, let's say if um, you thought of any question later on, you can still go to the booth. We actually have the UOL booth ongoing for one-to-one -one consultations. So if you want to get your transcript assessed, your entry eligibility assessed, you can still uh, go for it. Okay, so I have another question. Any courses exemptions? Um, we are in the midst of applying. Uh, we've got some institutions um, in Singapore, for example, Singapore Poly, they have approached us and we have approached University of London to see whether their specialist diploma program could get some exemptions. So a talk with the program director, um, well, he mentioned that if some of you have got um, in-depth Python qualification as well as data visualization, maybe there could be exemption for the two modules. So the two modules that I list here is the third module here that says data programming in Python. And then after that, data visualization. There is a chance if you could show, if you could put in your application and show us the detailed syllabus, there might be exemption. Okay, so I think uh, Loon, you have just uh, rephrased your question. So I understand that you are a diploma holder looking for a degree, uh, but this program is a postgraduate degree. So if you are looking for a degree in data science, yes, uh, UOL does have it as well. Um, I would advise you to go to the booth. We do have a general inquiry booth um, over here as well. So you can actually um, get more, uh, get your, uh, diploma assessed, uh, find out more details about the degree in data science, bachelor degree in data science uh, from the general inquiry booth. So you can just go to the consultation, the tab on your extreme life hand side, you have the webinar consultation. So you can go to the consultation tab and click into the general inquiry, which is the bottom, second booth from the bottom. Yep, and then you can get your questions answered over there. Okay, is there any other questions coming in? We will stick around for maybe a couple of more minutes just to see if there's any other questions. So Denise, uh, just a quick check. What will be other commonly asked question that you receive when you do consultations on this program? Maybe you can share with everyone. Okay. Um... We have some participants asking, they are totally from a non-IT background. They know that data science is hot. They want to step into the industry. Can they with this program? I think I need Dr. Julian to explain. Uh, yes, insight. you can. Okay. As mentioned, this is actually the intersection between uh, statistics uh, and then uh, IT and some of the management as well. So if you say uh, you have no programming background, uh, uh, if you see just now, Denise has a slide, that actually for those of you who have not the, this, uh, get the, uh, this Python background, you need to do the k-means and learn the introduction to Python. So I think uh, Denise can share that one again. So if you don't have it, then this is probably a good one for you. The fee for this is only $50 US dollar and after you do this, I think you are more or less you 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 you'll be able to follow uh, our program. Is there a second question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Julian, you want to share about Python? Uh, for this masters, it seems that quite a few modules mm, will use Python for yes. the course. Yes, if you see, uh, can, can we have one of the degree, for example, data okay. science or maybe machine learning or AI, if you take a look at this, after you get the Python's uh, so-called foundation, you can actually, uh, I, I, okay, in some of the institution, okay, uh, mathematics and statistics, they use Python to do that. Machine learning, definitely Python, okay? Machine learning that we uh, taught in uh, University of London, definitely Python. Data programming, definitely Python. And data visualization, you can do it in Python. So I'm not very sure, depending on, okay? And natural language processing, definitely Python. Neural language, I would believe so. And blockchain, uh, I think George is going to use Python as well. 
and and of course the London that they, they probably also will discuss with them. I think uh, once you have this Python background, more or less this thing I think is not that difficult. So that's actually the uh, the reason why uh, London want us to actually learn Python. And if you don't have the background, you actually uh, pick it up yourself. The K means over there, fifty dollars. Uh, this uh, completion, the certificate of completion. More or less, I think after that, you should be able to follow the rest of the courses, or the rest, the rest of the classes that we have. Hopefully, that answered the question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Julian, and thank you, Denise. Uh, it seems that we don't have any more questions and uh, it's about time for us to end the session as well to prepare for the next session. If I could and interrupt for a while. So yes. those three, they actually just now that actually uh, won the game. So I would like you to uh, approach uh, Ash, uh, the email address. You Please uh, send the email address to uh, him. Let me see. Can I share my screen? I am sharing my screen currently, I guess. Yes, you are sharing your screen. Uh, let me see, this is the one, okay? If you, see, oh, the second one. Here. Do you see this? Ashtor at sim.edu.sg. So write to him and tell him uh, your email address, sorry, your email, uh, probably uh, your, your this username. Just now we have uh, Magic All, etc. Okay, so tell him, then you will be able to actually get in touch with him and and I don't know how, how he's going to deliver it. So probably you can uh, come to the camp campus or whatever it is. So please approach him, okay? And you've done quite well. I think six of, six of you quite uh, done quite well. So hopefully this lessons, the masterclass is useful. That's really about a very, very basic about the data science and AI. Right. Right, thank you. Thank you, Julian. Yes, I have just indicated the details, Ash details on the Q&A session as well. So for the three winner from the Kahoot game, uh, please uh, write your details. Please leave your details and your mailing address to Ash. We will mail the, uh, the, the present to you. Okay, it is a notebook with a uh, power adapter. Yeah. With that, uh, thank you so much, everyone, for attending the session and spending a Saturday afternoon with us. So if you have further questions, uh, you can always go to the booth. We have the UOL booth uh, that's available where our staff is able to uh, provide you with one-to-one -one consultation session. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Julian. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you.